Hello YouTubers, thank you for coming to watch my video. So if this is your first time to click on my um, astrology videos, I am a person that just studies uh, Vedic astrology, Jyotish astrology. And what I do for my hobby is I love to do people's uh, charts and I love to look at the energies that they have, um, especially people that are very unique and I like to see what creates the energies that they had in their life. This is why I choose to um, pick people that have already passed and so I go over people's charts and I share them with you, okay? So since this is the month of June, which is Pride Month, today I picked to do Freddie uh, Mercury's birth chart. And so I'm going to go over his chart. I'm going to explain some things to you. And so um, Freddie, he was born September 5th, 1946, and he was born um, in... Uh, Sanzibar, the city of Sanzibar, um, and now it is a, something different, which is like Kenya instead. Um, but he was born there, but when he turns about nine years old in 1964, they had moved, his family had moved to um, to England, okay? Um, and when he moved over there, he began to be more interested in music, and then he started writing music, he started writing lyrics, and he became very musically talented at this time. When he reached high school, he had put a band together, and they called themselves the Hectics. Um, so, a lot of people would say that uh, Freddie would take this, he could listen to a song on the radio, and with that song, he could listen to it one time and then go and play it on the piano. That's how talented he was with playing instruments, with, with his talent of music. Um, he went to art schools when he got older. Um, he went to an art school, and um, that was in West London. He also went to a graphic art and design college and he graduated there in 1969. Um, then later when he joined uh, the band or the I guess it would be called band uh, Queen they created Queen which most of you know a lot of the songs um, they're just songs that may be even older than you but you still know the song um, but Queen was um, the band that uh, became really popular, they're still popular today, everybody knows who they are, um, and because of different, uh, different movies have used their songs because they're classic songs. But um, he had wrote a lot of songs himself that they played that became really popular. Um, some of them were uh, Killer Queen and Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, Somebody to Love, and We Are the Champions, Don't Stop Me Now, Crazy Little Thing Called Love. Now those are some of the songs that he had wrote, and most of you know those songs. Now, um, in 1987, um, he was uh, diagnosed with AIDS, and at the time, um, he was, everybody at that time, in the 80s, uh, AIDS was a, uh, they weren't sure exactly what it was. They just thought it was a gay, um, they thought it was a gay cancer. And so with that, um, a lot of people was definitely raising their their questions. Is he gay? Because he really hadn't come out directly and told people that he was gay. He just was very flamboyant. He wore very colorful clothes. He was very out there, but he was very unique um, in his own way, and everybody loved him. He was just that unique person. If they didn't like to watch him, they sure did like to listen to his music. Um, so, uh, later on in his life, before he had passed away, um, he had admitted that he was sexually attracted to men and women. He, he liked both of them. And he finally did come out with that and say that he was um, basically bisexual. Back then, 
people just used the word gay. It wasn't bi, and it wasn't all that we use today. But he did come out, and he said, quote, I'm what I am, so what, end the quote. Um, but he didn't mind after a while. Um, but at the end of his uh, life, he had passed away in November on November 24th, 1991, um, but it was from uh, bronchial um, pneumonia, but this was from the AIDS, uh, because that's just what happens. But anyway, so this was his, a little bit of his life story. Um, now, so I'm going to go over his chart and explain some things to you as of Jodish astrology. Uh, they believe in putting the moon in the first house because this is your emotions. This is how you feel. The, the moon is your emotions. So um, the moon, his first house would be Sagittarius. His moon was Sagittarius. So we're putting the moon, making that his ascendant. Okay. So the moon was Sagittarius and um, it was in Porva Ashada. It was 13 degrees in Sagittarius. Purva Ashada, um, this is the nakshatra that represents a fan. These people like to spread their words and express their feelings through their words. And they use their emotions to express their feelings as well. They, they fan their words out to their fans. Um, a lot of people will listen to them. They could, I mean... Even if they made up a lie, people would still listen to him. They just like to listen to him. And definitely, um, Queen was very famous and still is, like we said. Um, and he definitely fans his music to everyone. Um, these people also are very good. Te they're teachers. They like to teach people the philosophy. Um, they're very... Um, they're very truthful as well. Um, and if they try to lie, they are not good liars. Um, but they're very um, truthful. Um, they're always searching for the truth and the justice that they believe in within themselves. Sometimes they can be very judgmental towards others, or they could be very judgmental, and what they believe is the only thing that there is to believe. They kind of get a little stubborn and, and don't look at things. They either see just black or white. They don't never see in between. But they are very loyal people, truthful people. Um, but they expect others as well to be truthful as they are. But these people are very adventurous. They like to do new things. Um, they're very determined and they are un defeated. They are very determined people. Whenever they think of something, they go after it and they get it done. They make sure it is done the way that they want it. Okay. So that is his moon. This is the way he feels. This is the way people see him. This was his um, moon. Okay. Um, so in, by going by his moon, his second house would be um, Capricorn. So this would represent his family growing up at home. His parents were probably uh, very strict or they probably had their own rules maybe a little OCD or he felt that they were OCD maybe a little over controlling is what he might have felt but um, it was about that Saturn energy because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn um, then his third house he would not have any planets as well but it would be Aquarius now this would be um, travel his learning skills, uh, very unique. He might have learned things in a different way than others. Um, but these people are, um, that Aquarius is kind of scientifically, uh, they like to learn science. And he might have been really into science. I don't know. Um, but then his fourth house would be Pisces, which has no, um, has no significant planets in that by going by his moon chart fifth house he which is family marriage uh it, when he, when you're married and your children and he has no planet setting there it's also creativity um but it would be aries and then he had um in the sixth house he has Rahu. Now Rahu is at 23 degrees in Taurus and that nakshatra is Rohini. Now let me explain what Rohini is. Rohini is people that are very honored. People honor them. People look up to them. Um, these people are very intelligent. They're very, um, they love, they're like the 
love of light. Um, they also like the best of the best. When they want something or get something, it's because it says in Taurus. Taurus is about the finer things in life. And this is definitely the nakshatra that will represent the finer things in life. They like the nicer clothes. They like the nicer cars. They like the nicer things. Um, they would rather have quality than quantity, okay? But they like the finer things in life. And this was his Rahu. Rahu is your karma planet, what you're here to do in this lifetime, which would be setting in his sixth house and his sixth house is about his everyday work life, the people around him, debts, um, it can be illnesses as well and we all know that he had passed away from AIDS and that is Rahu that sits there which extre is extreme. Um, it, it blows that house up. It makes it even more intense and stronger. Um, but Rohini is that um, the finer things in life. They like the best of the best. All right, so then we go to the seventh house. The seventh house would be ruled by Gemini. Gemini is about, it's kind of like the um, bisexual type of energy, okay? You can either go one way or the other, um, but it is that, um, that uh, it's not male, it's not female, okay? So it's that house of, of it can be bisexual, that Gemini. But also, uh, Gemini is about um, very intelligent, speaking, communication, um, but he has no planets there, but that is what rules his seventh house is uh, Gemini. Um, then in his eighth house from his moon, it would be the, um, it would be Cancer, and in that he has um, Saturn. So Saturn setting in Cancer can represent as well like his mother. Maybe she was more stern than the father, but it was about her wanting him to do the best that he could do. Um, she probably was just more uh, stern towards him. Also, this would be the eighth house. This would rule, um, in other words, with the with cancer setting there, it would make him intuitive as well. It would bring that intuition. It would bring um, intuitive energy, okay? Because the eighth house is about that mystical, um, occult, occult, um, secretive, Stuff, okay, so but uh, it, the, he does have Saturn setting there, and it says in Pushia. And Pushia is about nurturing, prosperity. Um, they like security. Uh, they're spiritual philosophers. They're teachers, but they just need like a lot of stability in their life and security. But they can be stubborn as well. Um, they are another philosopher that is always. Uh, that might think their way is the only way as well. Um, but then we go to the ninth house. This is your belief system. This is how you believe, like your beliefs in God, gurus, whatever. But what is very interesting, he has Mercury setting there, and also he has the sun setting there. So um, his Mercury is setting at 10 degrees in Leo. Leo does represent... Um, that uh, father figure. This is also the um, ability, uh, that house of your father as well. So um, maybe his father had a big influence on his life. Maybe he had this, he looked up to his father, um, but it is about uh, the 10 degrees in Leo is ruled in the nakshatra of of Magha. Magha is that uh, nakshatra that brings royalty into your life. It brings prosperity. These people are happy. These people are famous. Um, when these people go anywhere, people kind of are attracted to them. People just are attracted to them. They look at them. They almost are like worshiping like he is a god. Um, but that's what that Magha does. But it does bring... Um, it does bring fortune, happiness. These people can be stubborn, but also another thing about MAGA is they are very musically and in uh, in, in, they're inclined, musically inclined. Um, they're very creative, and MAGA has the ability to create that music, create singing or just the music talent, okay? Um, so that is his, uh, his, 
his Mercury, which I feel very, um, I'm very interested that they gave him the name, the last name Mercury. I didn't look up why they chose his last name to be Mercury because that was not his uh, birth name. Um, Freddie Mercury was not his birth name. But um, I do find it that his his Mercury sets in Leo and Maga, which is kingly. And definitely everybody knew who he was. He was like a king. Like everybody looked at him and was drawn drawn to him. But he was a person that brought uh, fame, he had fame, and it's his Mercury that sits there. Now, um, he has the sun there as well, and the sun is your soul, who you truly are, how you feel, also how your father is as well. Now, um, the father or his son, his soul, is in Porva Falguni. Now, this is about prosperity and happiness as well. This is about people that are very loyal. These people like to love. They're very um, loyal to their family. They are loyal to their roots as well. Leos are just uh, they're about their ancestors, okay? Um, but also, um, these people are um, very musically um, inclined as well. They like to use music. They like to dance. They like to sing to express the way they feel. They use their feelings with music, singing, dancing, whatever. They use that to express the way they feel. And um, uh, we also have... Um, so with that, we have the moon, which is ruled um, in Sagittarius, which is basically uh, the fan, which people listen to them. They spread their words to people, which he definitely made music, and he fans it all over. Um, he fans it in more than, you know, not just the United States, but London, everywhere. Everybody knows who Queen is. But he fanned himself out to others, okay? So back to that, um, that sun. So it's music, dancing, singing, and to express herself. Now, um, also, it, he has, in the 10th house, he has Mars. 10th house is career, which was was definitely his singing. Um, now his Mars is at 24 degrees in Virgo, which would be Chitra. Chitra is about a gemstone. It's a jewel. Um, when people look at them, they see like their eyes are like jewels. They are bright. They're shining. They stand out. These people stand out. Okay, and he definitely did. These people are very good creators. Um, they are very, uh, they become famous. They can become famous overnight. Um, but they are people that do like to wear fancy, bright, flamboyant colors, flamboyant stuff. Okay, um, but they have very good opportunities in life because they go for what they want and they get it done. But they like to wear those bright colors and um, they like to be flamboyant. They just like to be out there. They like people to look at them because they are that jewel. They can shine from a far distance. People can see them, okay? Um, in, their 11, in his 11th house, his 11th house is about that uh, wish, your wishes, your, um, your gains in life, other people's money, the people around you that are in a higher level than you. But it also, it, it, he has Jupiter sitting there and Venus, but they are also setting in Chitra. Um, they are setting in, um, in Virgo, but this is at the beginning of Virgo. So they're both setting at three degrees in Chitra. So in other words, with that Chitra, um, he had a lot of flamboyant energy. He had that ability to stand out and be a jewel. So he gained, so he has that Chitra, Mars. Mars is that warrior. So he was a warrior through his work. He was a, uh, a hard worker. Um, that was about that or this is about Virgo. Virgo's OCD. Maybe he wanted to make sure his stuff was perfect before he went out on stage. Wanted to make sure his his music was perfect. He wanted to make sure that he had everything perfectly done um, just right. But with that, that Chitra, he gained money 
became famous overnight really quickly, but he also uh, gained from that, and that was where he got his riches, and that's where he got his um, his ability to make his money, which is the 11th house, other people's money. Um, so with that, that was Chitra as well. So his Jupiter and Venus were also, and Jupiter is expansion. So Jupiter expanded that bright flamboyant colors. Um, and Venus is love. It is women in your life. So he probably was attracted to the women that were in his life that were also uh, very, um, they like to wear bright colored clothes and um, like to, they were like a jewel, okay, as well. Um, but also, Jupiter sitting there. Um, Jupiter is uh, that expansion, knowledge, learning. So he also learns in gaining things in his life with other people's money as well. Um, then in his 11th house from the sun, he had K2 there. Now, K2 represents um, separation, but it is your karma connections from your past life. So his K2 sits there at 23 degrees in Scorpio. Now, this this next shot is Jesta. Jesta is, is ruled by Mercury. So let's talk about Mercury sitting in a nakshatra that's ruled by, by K, or K2 that's ruled, uh, sitting in a nakshatra that's ruled by Mercury. K2 and Mercury will bring that bisexual um, energy as well into a relation or into a chart, into that, that energy, okay? But with that, he, uh, that is his past life. But also, in this life, you got to learn how to balance your Rahu and your Ketu, your karma planets out, and give them a good balance, okay? Um, but um, it is in Jesta. Jesta is mystical. These people are able to manifest into their life what they speak. Um, they can bring that in. They can manifest things. They can create things to be what they want them to be, okay? Um, these are people that have power. They have this uh, this ability to bring things into their life, but um, they also are mature people. They're intelligent, um, but they also bring wealth, and these are people that can bring a lot of wealth into their life, okay? But with this energy, we have his, his um, Rahu is in Taurus, his K2 is in Scorpio. So this gave him that energy that he had to learn how to balance out was the sixth house energy, which is um, fighting um, illnesses. And then the twelfth house energy, which is about losses as well. But this was his karma in life, okay? Um, which uh, this also is Taurus. And, and Taurus is about that, um, the finer things in life. It is about love. It is about women as well into your life. Um, so he probably also every day had lots of women in his life because Venus is what rules the, um, what rules Venus or what rules Taurus, and that's your, and it sets in his sixth house, which is his everyday life. So he probably did have a lot of females around him, a lot of females around him, um, because Rahu sets there. Rahu expands it, makes it a little cloudy even, maybe sometimes makes it a little difficult. Um, but then uh, Scorpio is about that, um, it is about kind of that deep love, that deep uh, kind of like uh, that, that Taurus is more about a soft energy of love and um, and Scorpio is more of a harsh, um, deep love. Like they will come back and get you if you mess them up. But that Taurus is more of a forgiving love. Um, so um, that that was something else that he had to learn how to balance out in his life. Um, but um, so with that, that was his Scorpio Taurus. It was his 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 karma in life. Now um, with the moon chart, you can see the AIDS down in the sixth house, which is is that um, um, that that 
illness, sickness, and then the twelfth house is loss, death. And so with that, that would bring that, um, that would be his karma in life. So when you do stick the moon in the first house, it does bring a whole new meaning to your chart when you look at it in a different way. Um, but also what I failed to say is the moon, the moon represents his mom. So his mom was that Sagittarius type of person. She was probably very spiritual. His father might have been spiritual too because it's in the ninth house, which is spirituality, but his mother was probably more of a speaker. She probably was a person that um, could she liked to speak what she believed in, but she did not see, she only seen black and white. She never seen anything between, but she was probably um, somebody that always was seeking for justice. She was always seeing things in her way, but it brought her this, she was a philosopher, and he probably learned from her, because Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, so he probably learned from her as well, not only his father, but his mother. Um, now, um, so this is uh, Freddie Mercury's birth chart, and I hope you guys followed along. I hope you liked to watch this video. I hope that you get to see more of my videos this month. I'm going to pick a few more people that are, um, that were, um, I, I should say, um, LGBTQ, um, that um, I can share their charts with you as well. Um, but what I wanted to say is with that Mercury and K2, that brings that energy, and also there is some more, there are some more settings, um, but I don't really get into all of that, but I like to see that when I do read it, it kind of confirms their um, sexuality. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope to see you next time, and I hope you have a wonderful day, all right? Make sure to smile. It is um, very... Um, nice to see somebody smile at you and it is very catchy all right so make sure you smile today at someone all right it might make somebody stay all right bye-bye this is